Welcome, welcome, folks. I'm Jabby Kuwait, joined by Char Kirk. Hello. So after yesterday's video, I took a look at the comments, and a number of you decided to let me know that we missed the other half of the Team Z former employees' testimony, and said that it was very, very, very much worth looking at. And so we're kicking off today's reaction set with that, and then after that, we'll have a series of other clips. The colors have been modified in an editor, metadata expert says. Amber Heard's expert attempts to discredit Johnny Depp's expert's findings. Oh. Street Fighter, <laughs> expert edition. I have a right to tell my story. Amber Heard says she's harassed, humiliated, threatened daily. We have a number of Amber Heard clips here, just so y'all know. Johnny Depp, attorney, snaps at Amber Heard. Your lies have been exposed. Another liar in the stand, Johnny Depp lawyer, accuses Amber Heard of leaking Johnny Depp video. Johnny Depp lawyer, Amber Heard, used the same photo for two different alleged abuse in incidences. And then Amber Heard, Blast Kate Moss, came out of the woodwork to testify for Johnny Depp. Before we get into our reaction, uh, you know, the necessary, perfunctory, obligatory qualifier that Jabby likes to do. I personally do not find domestic violence or sexual assault funny. And uh, if you see me making jokes or laughing at all here, it's not because I find those two aforementioned items funny whatsoever. It's because sometimes there are absurd moments in this trial that it's just like, I can't help but laugh. At the same time, I have to add another qualifier on top of that because of a number of comments coming at me just for making that qualifier, which is, you know, I am the kind of guy who tries to be respectful even though I feel like by my nature I can be offensive sometimes just because I am super, super honest and straightforward. So allow me to be me, goddammit. I'm objective, I'm skeptical, and I, and I apologize sometimes even when I shouldn't. So that's who I am. Anyway, uh, let's get into this. So how do you know what video was shown at this trial? Um, I was alerted by a friend that um, that TMZ was being kind of talked about in this trial, and so I had seen a clip of that. Okay, so you watched some of this trial? Correct. Okay. When did you first reach out to counsel for Mr. Depp? Um, okay, I believe so that was six out. days ago, whatever that date would be, I'd have to do that. All right. And then you received a subpoena, I think, yesterday in care of your attorney, Cindy Hickox, right? Correct. Okay. And Cindy Hickox represents Christy Dombrowski, Kate James, Robin Baum. Objection, Your Honor. Were you aware Calls of that? Calls for speculation. Oh, overruled. Were you aware of that? No. Okay. Who are these people? Now, if you don't have information that's helpful to this case, then you wouldn't be a witness, correct? Objection, uh, calls for speculation. Yeah. Sustained, I'm, sustained, next question. I'm not aware. Right. Okay, you know, this, you know this case is being televised, right? I, I am aware that there are cameras. And so this gets you your 15 minutes of fame, doesn't Objection, it? your honor, argumentative. I, I can ask that question. Oh, ruled. Um, so I stand to gain nothing from this. I'm actually putting myself kind of in a target of TMZ, a very litigious uh, organization and I'm not seeking any 15 minutes here. Though so you may, you're welcome to speculate. I could say the same thing by taking Amber Heard as a client for you. Ooh, a little argumentative, don't you think? Oh, hardly. I <laughs> oh, look at the guy in the background. Look at the guys in the background. They, they're losing it. Wow. She was not expecting that. She was not expecting the sass. Like, they, oh, they, like you if, did not, lady. If nothing else woke them up, yeah. that did. Yeah. Like, if they were, they might have been like, just like almost out, like almost <laughs> dozing off. And then what? Like, man, there we that woke me up. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> holy. I could say the same thing by taking Amber Heard as a client for you. A little argumentative, don't yeah. you think? Oh, hardly. I find that to <laughs> Look be at all the logical. faces. Thank Look you. at the lawyer. Mr. Depp's attorney. <laughs> Jesus Christ. She started it. What sort of what sort of question was that? Argumentative question. It's like, all right, lady, gloves off, let's go. Now I know what my what my parents felt like watching the OJ trial. Right. <laughs> no. I find that to be purely logical. Thank you. Now, are you aware that Mr. Depp's attorneys were well aware of the TRO that was going to be presented on May twenty seventh? Objection, calls for speculation. Were you aware of that? Lack of foundation. No, overruled, if you can answer it. Can you restate the question? Were you aware that Mr. Depp's divorce attorneys were aware that Amber Heard was going in to seek a TRO on May 27? I don't think I understand the question, but I don't think so, no. Okay. It's Do kind of a you know question. whether Blair Burke, one of Mr. Depp's divorce attorneys, has a very close, had a very close relationship with TMZ at that time? Objection calls for speculation. Overruled. <laughs> What do you want me to do, Judge? 
Uh, I was not aware of that. Okay. And when you said that you were dispatched twice, once to film Amber for in a parking lot for the deposition, and then it didn't work out, and so you had to do it another time, how did you know it didn't work out? Because TMZ.com posted an article saying as much. Okay. And I, you know, I was not dispatched. Do you know the why office. the deposition did not work out? I'd have to reference the article. I forget. So, so do you? Know, I, I didn't write that story. I wasn't involved in the actual you know journalism of that. Which side? Do you know which side would have known or not known whether that deposition was going to work out? In other words, the people representing Mr. Depp or the people representing Ms. Hurd? I wouldn't know. Okay. Um, and then the video clip. Um, you don't know who provided that, correct? Correct. Okay. Not testifying to that. I have no All right, redirect. Mm. Mr. Tremaine, why did you contact me <laughs> in relation to this case? Um, I saw that there was a discrepancy with like the video that was shown here in the video that I know I had received. So I, I had no interest in testifying. It was I had reached out simply to maybe try to help with the timeline of things. Or, or help with the case in any way just by virtue of, of understanding the timeline of the stories that were published and kind of how that can be unclear. Um, but I had no idea I'd be on the stand. I hate to put it this way. That was one of the most entertaining moments in this entire trial. It was just like him <laughs> firing shots back at her right. and then seeing the, the people in, in, you know, who attend the court proceedings just like losing their shit as if they're like at a, at a rap battle or something. <laughs> was, Mic drop. Yeah, it's unlike yeah. anything I've ever seen. Whether he meant to or not, he has definitely gotten 15 minutes of fame because everybody's talking about this dude. He made an epic clapback against a lawyer. He was just like, no, no, no. I'm not having any of that. I'm yeah. right back at you. He was really solid in his foundation of like all the information, yeah. all the dates, the succinctness with which he presented this information. He was very, very much ready uh, for the stand. Whether he knew he was going to take the stand or whether he intended to or not, he was ready for it. If I had to speculate, which I'm going to, he knows that Amber Heard delivered those videos personally. Yeah, like but he can't she, say. He, but he cannot say that. And that's why he approached Camille Vasquez and not Amber Heard's team. Because he's like, oh, I just wanted to clear up the timeline. It's like... Yeah, but you approached Camille Vasquez's team, not Amber Heard's. Yeah, this information is not going to help Amber no, Heard's team. No, not at all. At all. I'm pretty sure he only approached Camille Vasquez because he knows something that he's not allowed to say. So this next one is Law & Crime Network. The colors have been modified and editor metadata expert says. Can you publish it? No. Yes. So aggressively loud. So, Mr. Newmeister, what was uh, depicted in that video? The same photo treated uh, two different ways. One was marked with the original op or with the operating system from an iPhone, which is iOS 9.3.1 on that particular uh, photo. The one that says 9.3.1, there is a graphic below indicating it. The second photo uh, is marked Photos 3, and it looks quite a bit different. Mr. Newmeister, does the image in Defendant 708 appear to be uh, similar, same photo as uh, what was depicted in your demonstrative? It's the, it's the actually, it's the Photos 3.0 uh, edit version. Thank you. We can take that one down, Tom. Mr. Newmeister, have you also formed an opinion about Defendant's Exhibits 712 and 713? Correct. Why is it scrolling? You know, oh, got a crossfade. Oh, oh, on top of each other. Okay, this there is what we, we wanted. Go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Mr. Newmeister, what, what do we see here in this demonstrative? There's uh, exhibit 712, I believe you have. I'm not sure the Bates number was 712 and 713. They're two separate exhibits, except it's the exact same photograph that's been, uh, one's been edited, one hasn't. Or I can't say that one hasn't, but uh, the colors have been uh, modified in an editor. Objection, Your Honor, uh, beyond the scope of your ruling, talking about colors, it keeps happening. These came from an iTunes backup. Now, what is an iTunes backup? It's Objection, not Your Honor, I'm, I'm sorry. You're beyond the scope of your ruling. Exif metadata, this keeps happening. Your Honor, may I approach on this one? Whoa. Don't let him talk. <laughs> Shush. He's going to give the whole thing away. Irrelevant. Why are you laughing, Amber?
I don't think her laughing, you know, every once in a blue moon means that she's an evil person. I'm just you like, know. what's funny about this? I'm not saying she's not evil. I'm just saying that laughing every once in a great while or smiling does not mean <laughs> that's not indicative of evil, although she's laughing quite a bit. Yeah, Stop I laughing. Don't know. Stop laughing. Someone's a joke. Now it's too much. So, Mr. Neumeister, um, without going into the specifics, what's your opinion about the authenticity of the photos you received from Ms. Hart? Based on the way they were collected, there would Objection, be Objection, no Your Honor. We just ruled on this. I framed my question, I thought, Your Honor, to avoid the issue that you're concerned about. Mr. Neumeister, what's your opinion about the authenticity here? There's no way for any forensic expert to validate any of these photos. Okay. Thank you very much. No further questions. Mm -hmm. Good afternoon, Mr. Neumeister. Good afternoon. Your only degree is in political science, correct? 42 years ago, correct. And you have no degree whatsoever from any academic institution in computer science, correct? That's correct. And you have no certifications in computer forensics, correct? That's correct. Are you trying to attack his education? From the opinions you've testified today, you relied on no data except for the embedded EXIF metadata to support those opinions, correct? Incorrect. What other data did you rely on for the opinions you've testified to today? I was trying to explain that no, you kept it. What other data did you rely on for the actual opinions you've been able to testify to today besides EXIF metadata? The type of extraction that was performed? You're asking the question for the actual the opinions you, del you testified to. That is what I would use. I would this guy's making it so hard for him to answer the question. Yeah. He's like really trying to narrow down to like an idea, but it's like you keep stopping him from talking and that's not a good look. He's like, no, 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 no. That's not what I want to hear. That's not what I want to hear. Then the expert responds, well, I was trying to, no, 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 no. The meta, no, no. The photos, no. <laughs> what do you want him to say? You're asking the question. For the actual that opinions you, del you testify to. That is what I would use. I would also use vector scopes. Objection, Your Honor. That's that, that was not responsive to my question, Your Honor. If you want to approach. It's ridiculous. He's, yeah. He, like, he won't let him answer the question. They're reaching the end of the line here. That lawyer, I, I haven't heard him speak in too many clips. I've only heard him more recently. Mm -hmm. And he is very aggressive. Amber's team in general has been getting more aggressive. Well, I heard that it's because her team has, like, less time. Like, way less time now to do cross-examination. Yeah. So, they, they can't faff about. Yeah. It's pretty obvious what's going on here. Like, the you overlap the photos and they're the exact same photos. But they were presented as two different bits of evidence. Yeah. That's painfully obvious. It doesn't take a genius to figure that out. Yeah. Like, Ron Colin Bailey, whose clip we looked at yesterday, he overlapped the photos, right? Yeah. And it's like, literally anybody can do this. Yeah. Anyone can take these two photos, overlap them, and present that, and, 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 sh and demonstrate that this is the exact same thing. The best piece of evidence that Runkle of the Bailey presented in his little clip was hair. You can't control it. No. Your hair just keeps doing its own thing. <laughs> and if you move just even a little bit between taking you know, two photos, the hair is gonna be completely different. And her hair is not exactly tied back, right? Yeah. Her hair is out, there's strands. If you overlap these photos and those strands line up, it is hard evidence, it's the same exact photo. Amber Heard's expert attempts to discredit Johnny Depp's expert's findings. As you sit here today, you cannot testify that all of the photographs produced by Ms. Heard are authentic originals, correct? No, I can testify to the ones that Mr. Neumeister identified with specificity. Right, but there were thousands of photographs provided that Mr. Neumeister didn't testify about, right? I have no opinions on any photographs that the opposing expert has no opinions on. My question to you, though, is as you sit here today, can you testify that all the photographs produced by Ms. Heard are authentic originals? As I sit here today, I cannot opine to photographs that have not been presented to me that are not authentic originals. All right. You'll agree with me that in some instances, Ms. Heard produced multiple versions of the same photograph, right? Yes. Yeah, you just talked about it, right? Yes. And you'll agree with me that the XF data of some of the photos produced by Ms. Heard reflect the use of a photo editing application. I'll agree that they show the use of the photos application, which is a sorting and editing application. Okay, so hmm. you, what, what you it's a good were yeah. dealing with is that it will both sort and edit. That is correct. Are you prepared to swear under oath that each and every photograph provided by Ms. Heard and entered into evidence in this court is an authentic original? 
And based on the metadata that I have reviewed of the specific photographs I have reviewed, I can confirm that those are authentic original photographs. For the ones that Mr. Neumeister identified, I identified photos that were authentic originals. No, I'm asking you a broader question than that. There were multiple photographs that Ms. Hurd provided that were entered into evidence in this court. Mm -hmm. Are you testifying that those are each authentic originals? I have no uh, testimony or opinion on those because nobody's provided me opinion that they're not. He's, he's navigating his waters very carefully. Yeah, yeah, he's very good at, uh, at using the law speak. Well, he's a professional. Direct. Yeah. I know. I'm just like, you, what are you talking about, man? Can you see those circuits, sir? Yes, I can. You'll agree with me that those are different pictures? Visually, they look different to me, yes. All right. We can take that down. Can you pull up plaintiff's exhibit 1308? Mr. Gibson, can you blow up the time, date, and file name? It's the same time. Sir, you just agreed with me that those two oh. photos are different photos, correct? I agreed that they were visually different, yes. Right. So they are two oh, visually good. different photos that were created at the exact same hour the exact same minute, the exact same second, second. as each other, correct? And that's what the daytime metadata shows, yes. And the metadata shows something else, too. They have the exact same file name, don't they, sir? Yes, but that's not embedded metadata. Right. We have two <laughs> photographs entered into evidence in this court that have the same identifying information, but in your view, look visually different, correct? I don't agree that they have the same identifying information. I'm not, I don't see a software metadata field here. Amber Heard, I have to tell my story. How have you suffered publicly as a result of the Depp Waldman <laughs> statements? Objection, speculation. Overruled. I am harassed humiliated, threatened, every single day. Even just walking into this courtroom, sitting here in front of the world, having the worst parts of my life, things that I've lived through, used to humiliate me. People want to kill me, and they tell me so every day. I believe that. People want to put my baby in the microwave. Yeah, oh, okay, so that's yeah, awful. so here's the thing. Like people say the internet is full of the most awful comments. Yeah. Especially when they've deemed you the source of their ire because they think you're an evil, evil person. It could be innocuous and they'll come at you. So I can only imagine the barrage of hate she's receiving right now. Yeah. yeah. You tell me that. Johnny threatened, promised promise me that if I ever left him, he'd make me think of him every single day that I lived. Objection, Your Honor, non-responsive. All right, I'll sustain the objection as to that, if you want to ask the question. Amber, how did Mr. Depp's statements and threats to you that you were discussing, how do those continue to manifest themselves today? in the harassment, in the humiliation, the campaign against me that's echoed every single day on social media and now in front of cameras in this room. Every single day I have to relive the trauma. My hands shake, I wake up screaming. I, I have to live with the trauma and the damage done to me. My friends have to live with a set of unspoken rules about how to not scare me. Objection hearsay. Yes, sir. Unspoken rules. It's, it's overruled. Not Go ahead. About how to not touch me, not to surprise me. There's two things running through my head right now. I just want to be fully transparent. So one thing is, I don't know the exact timeline of everything, right? But we see her sitting with her lawyer 
laughing and joking around and she gets up on the stand and there's this 180s and she's like in this hyper emotional state. I would have thought it would have gradually moved into that. But this is me not being a behavioral specialist or anything like that. Yeah. So, you know, take it with a grain of salt. But she continued her her, her conversation or what she, her testimony rather in much the same way that behavioral arts pointed out. Yeah, I saw where that. Where she picked up right with the same exact wording verbiage that she stopped at. Yeah. My intimate partners have rules about how they can deal with me, how they can touch me. I have rules for doctors and medical professionals I see, gynecologists I see. I live my life with these sets of rules that I have to follow, my friends have to follow for me not to have a panic attack or a triggering event where I relive the trauma. Even if I'm training to do my movie, for instance, if I'm training for Aquaman, a combat scene and a trigger happens, I have a meltdown and have to deal with that. The, the, the crew I work with have to deal with that because of the damage I walk around with every single day from what I've lived through, from what I've survived. I'm not sitting in this courtroom snickering. I'm not sitting in this courtroom laughing, smiling, and making snide jokes. Uh, I'm not. That's not this true. Is horrible. I don't want to make light of any of her experiences or most especially the experiences of a DV or SA victim, right? Yeah. I don't want to make light of that. But we literally have video proof that she is sitting there making jokes or laughing or about laughing something. Or something. Like the jury can literally see her sitting there laughing with her lawyer. Yeah. You can tell your your story yeah. and what happened to you, if it's true. Yeah. By all means, you should definitely do that. But also to then say, I have not done this stuff. I did. I was not laughing. I am not smirking or snickering or whatever she said. Yeah. And there is video evidence, literally just moments before that you were, or just throughout this trial that you were. Yeah, like, during the, I'm dur sorry, yeah. I can't. During the forensic expert. No, just don't say that. Yeah. It's not true. Oh. This is painful. And this is humiliating for any human being to go through. And perhaps it's easy to forget that, but I'm a human being. And even though Johnny promised that I deserve this and promised he'd do this, I don't deserve this. I want to move on. The statements, the attacks on me, the campaign, that, it, that Johnny has elicited millions of people to do on his behalf when he himself objection on the do lack it. of foundation torture me speculation I'll, I'll sustain the objection next question amber how have the Depp waldman statements impacted your ability to do charitable work you know i would the only reason that People like Dr. Curry can sit up here on the stand and say I'm high functioning and I do things like have hobbies and have interests. Is Jackson is not responsive? Not. Your Honor, Mr. Depp gave long-winded oh. responses oh, yesterday. Oh, we're all good. It's because I found a solution to that pain. I woke up every morning with panic attacks and trauma until I realized I could do something with it. So to answer your question, Ben, it's. I, I was able to turn the things that I've lived through, my pain, my life experiences into work, into action, into providing a voice for other people. I'm not a saint. I'm not trying to present myself as one, as you all know, but I selfishly found relief in being able to use what I've lived through to advocate for others, to, to bring light to these issues, to give a voice to people who don't have the voice and the platform that I have. And while I would not wish this situation on my worst enemy, if it gives a voice to someone who doesn't have it. But I now, as I stand here today, can't have a career. I can't even have people associate with me because of the threats and the attacks that they have to endure. Jackson, non responsive. Are. And I can't do my charity work. Sustain the objection. I'm well aware of the fact that most people who are watching this are immediately writing her off. Liar, 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 right? The thought running through my brain is, and this is me being honest, the thought running through my brain is, if 
you are getting emotional, oftentimes you're trying to restrain that emotion. You're trying to hold back from getting emotional mm -hmm. because you don't want to appear weak. Yeah. Man or woman, you don't want to appear weak. That's when the tears come out. Yes. It's like you're, just, you're trying to keep it together, but it feels like, now again, I need to stress, I, I in no way am I trying to make light of domestic violence or sexual assault. It's really important that I stress that. It does It does have that appearance of like, please feel sorry for me. Acting 101, any, any good acting teacher will tell you, especially when you're trying to do an emotional scene, you play against that. In real life, anytime we start getting emotional, especially in public, we're not trying to let people see that we're upset. We're not trying to let people see our tears or how they have affected us. Or, yeah. And so it's a real struggle. And that's when your voice starts breaking. That's when your breathing becomes hard. Yeah. And you know, it's, it's a struggle. And so, yeah, I mean, I'm definitely seeing that here and it's it's hard to feel emotionally impacted by what she's saying, although she is saying a lot of the right things, using her platform to help other people and all of that. I feel like these are the things that I've heard people who, you know, are high profile and who have, you know, been victims come out and say, well, you know, I want to use my experience, my negative experience and turn it around right. and help other people, you know? Amber, other than the threats that you've described, what other threats have you endured since the Deb Waldman statements were made? I receive hundreds of death threats regularly, if not daily. I believe it. Thousands yeah. since I this trial has I, I believe started it. people mocking yeah. Mocking yeah. my testimony about being assaulted. Yeah. Making fun of my objection relevance, non responsive. Oh, the damages. You can continue. It has been agonizing. Agonizing, painful, and the most humiliating. Thing I've ever had to go through. I hope no one ever has to go through something like this. I just want Johnny to leave me alone. I just want him to leave me alone. I've said that for years now, and I thought he would after 2000. Objection non-responsive. All right, I'll sustain the objection. Next question. What do you hope to reclaim after this is over? protecting the secret that I did for as long as I did has taken enough of my voice. Johnny, Johnny has taken enough of my voice. I have the right to tell my story. I have the right to say what happened to me. I have the right to my voice and my name. He took it long enough. I have a right as an American to talk about what happened to me, to own my story and my truth. I have that right. I hope to get my voice back. It's all I want. And I've said that from day one. I mean, I think everyone has a right to their story and has a right to their voice. But also, if you're telling stories, then tell the truth. As you said a moment ago, she's saying all the right things. The ideas she's expressing are not wrong ideas. Yeah. They're, they're virtuous. Like she wants to have a right to her voice, like you just said a second ago, and what she stands for, et cetera, et cetera. But if the ideas that took her to where she is standing now are false or unfounded, yeah. that is hurting someone else's reputation. Exactly. What my brain is doing is it's like on overdrive because there's fleeting moments where what she's saying has an effect on me because like what she's saying is powerful. Yeah. It's But like the presentation of it is, I want you to feel sorry for me. So the other part of my brain kicks in and goes, oh, wait, wait, there's something, there's like a ruse going on here. Something feels spurious. It's a confusing feeling is the easiest way to put it. I go back to what I just watched yesterday and in the, in the weeks prior, which is there's been a series of instances where it's very clear that something is amiss. Yeah. That, that you know, her test, that there's just contradictions going on. Her goal in that testimony just now was to say, 
feel sorry for me. I'm going through a lot of shit. And I believe that she's going through a lot of shit. Oh, yeah. Without a doubt. I'm sure. I'm sure she's perhaps feeling like, oh, crap. Like, I didn't realize it was going to go this way. And I was not mentally or emotionally prepared for all of the the hate on social media and out in the public as well. The compounding effect of every single day of people sending these death threats and hate mail and then making fun of you, that's a lot for any human being to take. For me, the hardest thing to hear was like the comment of people saying like that they wanted to put her baby in the microwave. I'm like, why why would you do that? That's so awful. Because they think that she is so awful she deserves to hear something like that. Obviously, whoever said that isn't actually planning to do that. Right. It's just an awful thing that you can say. People don't think about the person on the other side of that. But, you know, in the same breath, I got to say, I, I don't think she was thinking about the person she was affecting in taking the actions that she did. Johnny Depp attorney snaps at Amber Heard. Ms. Heard, you just testified that this case has been very hard for you. So let's talk about that and why. Your lies have been exposed to the world multiple times, right? I haven't lied about anything I've been here to say. You sat here and told this jury that the events in Hicksville started with Mr. Depp getting really upset about a woman leaning on you. Is that correct? Yes, that's effectively what happened, yeah. You testified that he actually grabbed that woman's wrist and twisted it. And told her that he could effectively break her wrist by saying he knew how many pounds of pressure, or asking her how many pounds of pressure it took to break a human wrist. But your own witness, your former best friend, Rocky Pennington, she didn't corroborate that, did she? Uh, I'm not quite sure what part of that night she saw. There were a lot of people there. She didn't testify that Mr. Depp ra- grabbed anyone's wrist in Hicksville. Again, I don't know what Rocky saw. There were a lot of people there that night. You testified that once you brought Mr. Depp back to your trailer, he trashed it. That is correct. And the manager of the Hicksville trailer park was furious that Johnny had wrecked the whole thing. That's correct. Well, we heard from that manager of the Hicksville trailer park, Morgan Knight, on Monday, didn't we? I'm not quite sure who that guy was or if he had any involvement in this. I know a lot of people have come out of the woodwork to be involved. So you're accusing Mr. Knight of testifying and committing perjury? I'm not accusing anyone. I just don't recognize that man. You heard Mr. Knight testify that it was actually you who was upset with Mr. Depp spending time away from him. Isn't that correct? How would he know? He wasn't there. You heard Mr. Knight testify that it was actually you who was yelling at Mr. Depp. Again, I've heard a lot of people say a lot of things to be involved in the Johnny Depp show, but he wasn't there. He doesn't know. And he certainly doesn't know what happened behind closed doors. If you were shouting like loud enough, I mean, I don't, so I, I don't know yeah. the entire circumstances, you know, surrounding the event that they're referring to right now, because I haven't caught 100% of what's been presented in, in the court proceedings. But if you're shouting... If I shout right now, people outside of this apartment can hear me. You know, in a trailer. Yeah. It's not soundproof. No. I could be wrong, but I feel like a female voice actually carries better than a man's voice. Obviously, I I didn't hear that man's testimony, but I think that at the very least, you should be able to differentiate between was that a male voice or was that a female voice? I'm Mr. Knight a liar. I am saying he wasn't there, and what he testified to doesn't match what I know happened. But I don't fault him. He wasn't there, so how would he know? He testified he was there, Ms. Heard. Did you hear that? That's his testimony, yes. So you're calling him a liar? I'm just saying he wasn't there. You heard Mr. Knight okay. testify that the trailer wasn't trashed, and that's why you're calling him a liar. He testified that a light fixture was broken, similar to the way that yes, Johnny's other than a light fixture, testified that was the to only my thing closet that was broken, being rearranged right? Ms. Heard? and things Ms. like Heard? that. The only thing that was broken in the trailer, according to Mr. Knight, was a light fixture. Yes or no? I realize that he summed it up by saying a light fixture was broken. Just the way his security guard summed up him trashing my closet as being rearranged. Your Honor, I'm going to move to strike everything after he summed it up that it was a light fixture as non-responsive. She answered the question, Your Honor. Uh, over, overruled. In the security guard testimony, Your Honor. I'll allow it. Go ahead. Mr. Knight also testified that he charged Mr. Depp only $62 for the damaged light fixture. You heard that, correct? I did. In Hicksville, you were the only one that was jealous that Mr. Depp was spending time from other people. Is then that correct, Ms. Heard? That is incorrect. In Hicksville, you were the one who was upset that Mr. Depp wasn't giving you enough attention. Incorrect again. Ms. Heard, you told this jury that you had no idea the press was going to be at the courthouse when you got your TRO on May 27th, 2016. Do you remember that testimony? Uh, I said I did not have anything to do with it. Yes. No. My question again. You told this jury 
that you had no idea that the press was going to be outside after you got the ex-party TRO on May 27th, 2016. Do you remember that testimony? I apologize. I must have misunderstood Ms. Vasquez. Um, I actually had no idea whether they were going to be there or not. When I walked into the courtroom that day, it was completely quiet, still, empty. Even though I had given Johnny's team notice that I was filing Objection. the TRO, your Honor, this is not we responsive. had no reason to Move believe to that the press knew. Right. And, Your Honor, I would also ask that you instruct the witness to please stop talking once I lodge an objection. Your Honor, she's trying to answer the question as best she can, and Ms. Vasquez is misrepresenting to her what she testified to. Well, I'll instruct the last part as non-responsive. You, Just if you could answer the questions asked. Okay, thank you, Ms. Hurd. In fact, you testified that you were, quote, shocked when you saw press when you were leaving the courthouse. Yes? Yes. You weren't shocked at all, though, were you? Uh, incorrect. It was You knew the horrifying. press would be at the courthouse, right, Ms. Hurd? No. Well, you did bring your publicist to the courthouse with you on May 27th, 2016, didn't you? I sure did. I'm a public figure. I brought my publicist in case it blew up. In case. And you actually had alerted TMZ that you would be filing a TRO against Mr. Depp that very day, no, I did didn't not. you? No, I did the not. The one day you didn't bother to wear makeup to cover up the mark on your face. I did not call TMZ or any other news source or paparazzi source. No one. Well, I we never heard did that. testimony from former TMZ employee Morgan Tremaine yesterday, correct? Did I hear his testimony? Yes. Yes, I was he here. Yes. And you heard Mr. Tremaine's testimony that he knew to dispatch the paparazzi to the courthouse on May 27th, right? I heard him say that he knew that, yes. Yeah, and that he dispatched paparazzi to the courthouse to capture a picture of an alleged bruise on the right side of your face. Do you remember him saying that? I remember him saying that. That information must have come from your team, right, Ms. Hurd? Absolutely not. Why would I want that? What actual survivor of domestic violence wants that? Now, the video of Mr. Depp beating up some kitchen cabinets, you admit that you took that video, correct? Yes, I did. All right. And you acknowledge that the video was released online the day before you were deposed in connection with your divorce from Mr. Depp in August of 2016, right? I believe it was, yes. But you testified that you had absolutely nothing to do with the video's release, right? Absolutely not. And you testified that you learned about it, it when you landed after flying into L.A. Do you remember that testimony? Upon touchdown is when I was alerted to the video's you existence You heard Mr. Online. Tremaine testify that this about this video as well yesterday, didn't you? Yes, I did. And you heard Mr. Tremaine testify that TMZ received the cabinet video the same day you landed at LAX. Yes? I don't know if that I, I don't know if that's what his testimony was. I'm sorry. You heard Mr. Tremaine testify that the cabinet video was posted 15 minutes after TMZ received it. Yes? That's what I heard him say. And that this could only have been possible if the video was received directly from the source. Yes? I heard him say that. I don't know if that's true or if that's possible. Because it didn't come from me. I Mr. was flying. Tremaine so it, it, I know that's incorrect is what I mean to say. Another liar on the stand? I just know that that's incorrect. All right. And you heard Mr. Tremaine testify. That was a very good thing to point out. She's just like, so everyone who takes the stand is a liar. Yeah. Everyone is just out to get you. Is that what this is? Yeah. Maybe it's a huge conspiracy <laughs> out to get Amber Heard because everyone's a very, very big Pirates fan and they just want to see him make more of those or see him back in the Fantastic Beasts story. It just seems preposterous that everybody who takes the stand would be lying and just out to get Amber Heard. Yeah. The copyright to the cabinet video, right? That's news to me. The cabinet video you filmed of your then husband, yes? The copyright ownership of that is news to me. I learned that yesterday. It's the cabinet video that you captured of your then husband, yes? That is correct. I did capture that video, and the yes, cabinet that video, was my husband. The same cabinet video that was released the night before you were deposed in your divorce, yes? That's correct. Okay. You must have also heard Mr. Tomain testify that the version of the cabinet video that TMZ received was incomplete compared to the video the jury saw in this trial. Did you hear that? The video that the jury, that you have seen is complete. Right, but the one TMZ got the day before your deposition in the divorce was incomplete. I don't know, I haven't seen it. He testified that at the beginning portion of the video where you set up the camera, that wasn't included in the video that TMZ received. I don't know what video TMZ I'm received. I'm talking about Mr. Tremaine's testimony, Ms. Hurd. Let's just so focus on Mr. You're asking me to repeat Tremaine. his testimony? No, I'm asking you if you recall hearing him say those words to this jury. Yes, Under I heard his testimony. We all did. If we are to take what she's saying as truth, right, mm -hmm. which is like, 
I didn't send that video. I didn't send that video. How the heck did TMZ get that video? Did you send it to someone else who could have sent it to them? Why would you send a video like that to someone else? The part that got me was she said I had nothing to do with the video getting to TMZ. It's like, well, in if, if, if you sent it to a friend, yeah. If you send it to one person, you have effectively been become part of that process of it getting to TMZ. Yeah. The moment it leaves your phone by your action, you are part of that process that gets it to TMZ, whether you intended it to or not. You put that out there. Now that person has the right to do whatever they want with that. Now it's in their possession. Now, I mean, I don't know about the specifics of that. If it's like, oh, she someone can't, else you cannot can say, just... You cannot say, I had nothing to do with it if you sent it to somebody. Yeah. The only plausible way that video made it to TMZ and she had nothing to do with it is if this, someone hacked her phone. Yeah. But I haven't heard her say that. Exactly. She just keeps saying, I don't know how it happened. It's like, well, you should have an idea. Like, yeah, like, who, did you send it to someone? It, it came like, from you. You were the happened? one laughing in the, in the video. Like, you should have some kind of an idea. Who did you give it to? Yeah, and if it got out there and it was something like of yours that was private, why didn't you hit TMZ with some sort of like, I don't know, lawsuit, law yeah. thingy, like cease and desist yeah. or I don't know the stuff, but something to be like, you need to take that down. Yes. Under I heard his testimony. We all did. And he testified that the end of the video where you can see be seen smirking. I know you testified earlier that you haven't been smirking in this trial, but you sure were caught on camera smirking in that video. Yeah, I disagree with that. Not in, was also not included in the TMZ video. Everyone can watch that video and you can determine whether you think it's funny to me or not. That's because the video came from you, right, Ms. Heard? No, it did not. You edited that video out did the not portions. Come to me. No, it come from me. Ms. Heard, you edited out the portions that made you look bad before sending it to TMZ. <laughs> You're very wrong about that. So that if I wanted to leak information, I could have bad. done it in a more effective way a lot sooner and a lot more. Because you I was exactly living with a mountain that, right? of this evidence. If I wanted to leak it, I could have done a lot more with it. I thought you testified earlier in this trial that you didn't know how to leak things. I don't. Right. Uh, you edited that video before you gave it to TMZ so that only Mr. Depp would look bad. Yes? That's absurd. Right in the middle of your divorce proceedings. Again, you're very wrong. I'd like to show you um, a picture from that's already admitted into evidence. This is you at the courthouse on May 27th, 2016, when you got your domestic violence restraining order against Mr. Depp, right? It is. And next to you is a woman named Jody Gottlieb, right? Yes. Jody Gottlieb is your publicist. And dear friend. Yeah. Now I'd like to show you what's been marked as plaintiff's exhibit 1316. This is a picture of you on May 28th, 2016, right, Ms. Heard? I don't know when this was taken. This is the day after you obtained the domestic violence restraining order against Mr. Depp, right? Wow. I have no idea when this um, image was taken. I did not take it. There's no bruise on your face in this picture, is there? Again, I don't know when this was taken. And also, I'm outside. I was obviously wearing makeup. I have no idea when this was taken, so I have no idea if I can Let's speak to what your recollection. bruise you can Let's see Let's refresh your recollection about when this picture was taken. Um, can we please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 1315, just for the witness? It doesn't look like she's wearing makeup, to be fair. This is an article dated May 30th, 2016, right, Ms. Heard? That's what it says, yes. And this article contains the same photograph of you, Ms. Pennington, we were just looking at. Yes? Yes, I see that. And the article is entitled, Amber Heard Smiles as She Puts Arm Around Friend One Day After Getting Restraining Order Against Johnny Depp. Whoa. Is that, is that what the title says? I know that's what the title says, yes. This is also a picture of you and Miss Pennington on May 28th, 2016, isn't it? I don't know when this photo was taken, but it looks like the same outing as the picture prior. There's no bruise on your face in this picture either, right? I disagree. Uh, if it is taken when you represent it was taken, then obviously there's a bruise on my face. It's covered by makeup as per usual. That's Josh Drew in this picture, right? Yes, that's correct. And Miss Pennington? That is correct. In there too? Ms. That Pennington is submitted a sworn statement on your behalf in support of your domestic violence restraining order, didn't she? I believe she did, yes. Mr. Drew also submitted a statement in support of your domestic violence restraining order. I believe they both did, yes. Mm -hmm. Mr. Drew, I'd like to show you Defendant's Exhibit 512, which is already in evidence. Uh, oh! What did it cut off? Gosh, that was, that was getting, like, really heated. Like, I mean, Camille Vasquez before 
was yeah. no nonsense, but now she's just like. Yeah. Maybe it'll continue here because these are like succinct clips. You've seen this photograph before, right? I have. On the second day of your direct testimony, you testified that this was taken in the downstairs of the main apartment on December 15th, 2015. Do you recall that testimony? Uh, yes, I believe so. Just side by side. You've seen this photograph as well, right? I have. On the third day of your direct testimony, you testified that this photograph reflected spilled wine in Penthouse 5 on May 21st, 2016, didn't you? Again, I don't know because I'm looking at a partial picture oh, of the floor. Whoa. So unless you remove the metadata you've covered up, we could then tell. If you I didn't remove, cover it up, Your Honor. Could I, we unredact them Honor. so we could get context? Yes, that's how it's in evidence. That's how All it's right. in evidence. Next question. Well, the metadata next to it is so that Ms. Heard, to avoid this Ms. Sort Heard, of there is no question pending, and I would appreciate it if you wouldn't be making argument to the jury. Sorry, I it's thought you had asked me about it. No, I didn't ask you about anything. Let's look at your direct testimony from um, the third day. Wow. Wow. You can do that. You what? can just like yes, redact the, the information and then be like, so this happened on this day and then this happened like a couple, a few days later and it's the same picture. I feel like her team should have spotted day 17 that. 17 transcript. Yeah. Uh, sorry, can you Four, seven, five, zero. I guess when you're dealing with a messy situation like this where there's so much data, there's so much evidence. Well, yeah, because if, if you're going off the numbers, it seems like it's over a thousand pieces of evidence. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot, but still that's your job. Right. Uh, going to what line? Line four at four eight zero five. Camille Vasquez is losing her patience. Yeah. Like I can see she's just. Yeah. Do you see Had that it. you're testifying that defendants exhibit seven two five, which is reflected on the right side, reflects spilled wine on the floor in penthouse five? That's correct. Okay. And defendants exhibit five twelve and seven two five seem to be different versions of the same picture, don't they? That's correct. Okay. So which is it? Which one was taken on December 15th, 2015, or May 21st, 2016? If you remove the redacted metadata, you can find out. It's right there. Or if you're telling the truth, you would know. Recognize wow. a portion of a uh, of spilled wine on wow. the floor, and I'm supposed to know off the top of my head when you've no. lived through five years of this stuff? I don't think so. That's not how that works. Okay. I don't know, man. It looks like the exact same photo. I feel like if you submitted the evidence, I've gone through some stuff where I've had to submit pictures, right? Not anything bad. I knew every single picture that I put into the, the folder. Yeah. If you're building a case, would you not know every single picture that you had submitted? When like, you, yeah, I mean, well, if she has misled people, her only option is to play ignorant. Obviously. Yeah. Obviously. So that's the only thing you can do at that point. It's like, oh, I don't remember. I don't know. Yeah. The last clip. Here we go. But he has told the world that he's your victim of domestic abuse, hasn't he? Well, he started to say that only recently. He didn't make that claim up until very recently. So when we signed our divorce agreement and we signed a statement saying that neither party had ever said false claims for financial gain, it was relevant and important to me because I was the only one making the accusations. I was the only one making those claims. He wasn't doing that at the time. And he signed his name to it. You didn't expect as many people to show up and testify on his behalf that did, did you? Incorrect. When you told this jury under oath that you never assaulted, actually, struck that, sorry, Your Honor. Um, when you told this jury under oath that you punched Mr. Depp because you thought of Mr. Depp pushing Kate Moss down the stairs, you didn't expect Ms. Moss to agree to testify that that never happened, did you? Incorrect. I know how many people will come out of the woodwork to be in support of Johnny. So it you think Ms. Moss needs to come out of the that. woodwork to testify for Mr. Depp? Everybody who was around in the 90s and the early aughts knew that rumor. I had heard that rumor from multiple people. Of course, that's what flashed through my head when my violent husband not only swung for me, but all of a sudden swung for my sister. Of course I thought of that. I did not expect her to show up or not expect her to show up. It didn't matter. It doesn't change what I believed at the time. You told this jury under oath that Mr. Depp was aggressive and trashed a trailer in Hicksville. You didn't expect the manager of the Hicksville property, Morgan Knight, to come forward and testify that that was untrue, did you? 
Incorrect. I've already been through trials with this man. I know how many people will come out in support of him. Real quick about the Kate Moss thing. Obviously, whatever she thought she understood about Kate Moss was false. That was obviously wrong. Let's go off of what Amber Heard is saying. Give her the, as much as many of you don't want me to do it, let's give her the benefit of the doubt for five seconds, okay? Or 30. She heard the rumors as much as anybody else did. Right. And then Johnny Depp tells her that never happened. And she goes, I believe you. But inside her mind, she goes, but maybe you did it. Right. And so she's holding on to a secret, which is, I don't know if you were telling me the truth that night when you told me that you didn't push Kate Moss down the stairs, that she fell because of a weather thing. And so when she sees her sister in this thing, it all culminates in this, like the way she told it, it all culminates in this thing of like, I didn't believe you. And I'm about to see you do the thing that you said you never did. You know? Right. I mean, I don't know if she ever had that conversation with him. No, this is speculation. Right, that's speculation. Yeah. yeah, you can believe a false rumor, which went around in, you know, the 90s and the early 2000s, which yeah. is uh, Johnny Depp pushed Kate Moss down the stairs, right? That, that could be a rumor that goes on in the back of your mind. Let's get away from this in order to explain the point a little bit better. Um, so let's say OJ's dating someone. Yeah. And he tells this woman he's dating, I didn't kill her. I didn't, I didn't kill her. Like, yeah, right, I, glove, was found, I was found not guilty in the court. The glove didn't fit. The glove didn't fit. And then a situation presents itself where it looks like he might kill this woman he's dating. Mm-hmm. She's going to immediately think of Nicole Brown. Yeah. Right? Immediately. In terms of, like, her saying, you know, we all heard those rumors, blah, 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 and she believed it at the time, I actually could believe her believing that at the time. Well, yeah, I'm not discounting that yeah. at all. I'm like, okay, yeah, so you believed uh, a false rumor, yes. which then colored the way that you perceived a, a situation it, that, that was it, yeah. going on. I'm like, okay, that's yeah. fine. I'm just looking at her behavior in this cross-examination, and it's so fascinating to me because in her testimony earlier when she was talking with her lawyers, she was so like sad and like emotional in a different way well, and she then, hates Camille Vasquez that's I know why. all of a sudden this this, this like yeah. this you know repartee and, and just this this anger and, and all of that and attitude and everything is coming out I'm like because I'm wow, pretty sure okay. that in her deepest wildest fantasies she wishes she could choke out Camille Vasquez I'm sure she wishes she could I mean this is speculation I think any one of us if we were put in her position and getting grilled yeah. by Camille Vasquez the way Camille Vasquez is grilling her we might have some venom in our heart Oh yeah, you know. Yeah, the, the, this is a this is a verbal fight. You told this jury under oath that you had no idea that the paparazzi would be at the courthouse on May twenty seventh, two thousand sixteen. You didn't expect a TMZ employee to show up to testify that TMZ had been alerted that you would be at the courthouse and knew exactly which side of your face to take a picture of. Did you? I know how many people will come out and say whatever for him. That's his power. That's why I wrote the op ed. Is I was speaking to that phenomenon. How many people will come out in support of him and will fall to his power? He is a very powerful man, and people love currying favor with powerful men. Curring and I favor know that and firsthand. risking I've lived jail it. time for committing perjury. Excuse me. I didn't. I didn't hear your question. You didn't Excuse hear my me. Question. Miss Vasquez, if you do Curry. mind, please just repeat the question. I didn't hear you. Curry favor and commit perjury in this courtroom. I have seen for a powerful people do this. man. I have seen people do this time and time again. That's why I wrote the op-ed. You didn't expect Ben King, the house manager in Australia, to show up from England. He flew from England to testify that Mr. Duff's fingertip was found exactly where he said it would be. Did you? I have never heard Johnny testify to knowing where his finger was or really, frankly, making a claim that he knew where it was when it was found. I've never heard Johnny claim that. You didn't expect Johnny Keenan Wyatt. Johnny has never Ms. actually Heard. said that. Ms. Heard. And I think the jury can, yes. Ms. Heard, there's no question pending. <laughs> you didn't expect Keenan Wyatt, Mr. Depp's longtime sound technician, to show up and testify that Mr. Depp is not being fed lines through his earpieces, but instead music, did you? Not that it matters much, but of course, of course I did. I, I know how his employees treat him. So you probably, I know how his, his team treats him. Of course I expected that. Okay, so you probably expected Isaac Bruges to come and testify for Mr. Depp, right? I'm not sure I thought about that. Yeah, but you didn't expect Mr. Bruges to weep, to weep for Mr. Depp after what you've put him through and so many others with your lies. I relate you? to I relate to Isaac because he and I There's are the only no ones who ha- cried on this stand. Nothing further. All right, Cry, uh, redirect. Ms. Hurd, if, if Mr. Bruges felt misled, who misled him? Johnny, and I don't blame him. I don't blame him from crying. This is horrible. Miss Vasquez has suggested that you faked bruises on your face. Is that true? 
Absolutely not. I didn't need to. Did you ever fake an injury caused by Mr. Depp? No. Is any of the evidence of your injuries that has been put to the jury in this trial fake? No, absolutely not. And to the extent that there may be some confusion over when a picture of spilled wine was taken, why might that be? Objection. Is there so lack of foundation? Yeah, overrule. Because there's so many incidents of violence. There are so, there's so many pictures. There's so much evidence. Most people don't have this kind of evidence for years, five years. And when I was saying that to Johnny on the phone in that recording, I was saying for years this has been going on. And I have pictures. We have texts. We have everything. Normally, you don't get this amount of evidence. That's what I was pointing out to Johnny. It would be crazy to try to challenge this in this way. It's crazy. It's easy to, to not know the context of a, a picture of spilled wine because there are so many more important details, pictures, and also so much I didn't photograph, so much I didn't have the presence Objection, of Objection, non-responsive. Right, I'll sustain the objection. Next question. How did the threats that Mr. Depp made against you individually years ago resemble what you have endured as a result of the Depp Waldman statements? Beyond the scope of cross, Your Honor. Overruled. Johnny promised me, promised me he would ruin me, that he'd ruin my career, he'd take my life from me, death was the only way out, and if I got out, this is what he'd do to me. He'd make me think of him every single day. He promised me global humiliation. You saw those texts? He, he, what he couldn't do, the work of one individual, meaning Johnny, when he was inviting a, a disgruntled employee over for a spot of purple to fix my flabby ass up, that revenge that he sought back then was just what he could do as an individual, calling the studio to get me fired, trying to block him. Objection, block Your Honor, lack of foundation, him. speculation, hearsay, non-responsive. I'll sustain us to non-responsive. Ms. Hurd, how did those things that you just testified to, that Mr. Depp did, how did those resemble what happened to you after the Depp-Waldman counterclaim statements were made? Well, those are... Those Objection, are just, Your Honor, lack of foundation. She's overruled. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Those are just an echo of what... I'm living through today. It's like what I'm living in right now, what you see in this courtroom is an echo. This courtroom and the other courtroom he dragged me into to do the same thing again. The campaigns to have me fired, the blocking me to try to ruin my career, the threats he's made to humiliate me globally are being lived out in real time in front of you ladies and gentlemen for the past six weeks and for the whole world since our camera's here. No further questions. Thank you so much, Amber. All right, Ms. Hurd, you can have a seat next to your attorneys. I uh, firmly stand behind the notion that every good lie has truth baked into it. I just can't tell what's truth and what's not yeah. here because she has painted herself as total victim. Johnny Depp is the villain here. I've done nothing wrong. And she's, she's done that a lot. There are instances of fabrication, you yeah. know, where it's like the those two photos look exactly alike. They're the same photo, like mm -hmm. the positioning and everything. I'm like, okay, so you submitted the same photo twice. Maybe it was a mistake, but just cop to it. That's the thing that Johnny Depp did right was that it, he, he exposed flaws of himself in talking about his experiences and you know his perspective yeah. on everything. And then she's also insinuating that other people are lying or perjuring themselves. There seems to be contradictions. There seems to be lies. And when there, when you have that, it makes everything look questionable. It makes it hard to believe anything you're saying. Yeah. Like I said the other day, you know, she might have 990 truths and 10 lies. When you expose those 10 lies, now you're questioning the 990 truths. Yeah. And you have, and you have no idea what's true. You have no idea what's, what's not true. And it's like, so I'm left with just like complete doubt whenever she speaks now. I mean, that's not helpful to her case. Right. Not that, I, not that my feelings matter. No. Um, yeah. The thing that uh, Amber's team was trying to finish this on is Amber's a victim. Feel yeah. sorry for her. They were really trying to drive that home in the redirect. That's their only play. That's what it feels like. That's all. That's their only play at this point. Amber was going, there's a whole litany of evidence and you're trying to have me like be specific about this one piece of evidence out of thousands. So what if I messed up this one photo? It's like, no, but the problem is you submitted the same photo for two different things and you're not admitting it. Yeah. It's like, it's right in front of you. And instead of going, 
this looks like the exact same photo. I something was something must have gotten messed up on our side, you know, like so, copping to it. Just yeah. cop to it. It's like you got caught. You got caught, and you're trying to you're trying to do the this special legal speak to avoid admitting you got caught. These are, this is the same photo. Yeah. And not only this instance, but like two other instances. You know, obviously my understanding of court proceedings is very very limited. But it just seems to me that there are if there are clear instances in which you have lied and you're not admitting it, and it's like the jury can see that this looks bad, and you're not going to cop to it. Now it's going to make everything else look questionable everything yeah the most heinous stuff the most innocuous stuff the stuff that is very very plausible all of it looks questionable now it very well could be that a lot of what she's saying is true but how do you believe any of it that's what we're left with is just doubt yeah camille vasquez has successfully planted doubt into my mind as to as to the validity of anything amber is saying um so how do you guys feel let's just leave it at that how, yeah. do, how, how do you guys feel you know